Kids are the most wonderful beings. Their curiosity and energy are very unique, and their smiles often light up the place wherever they are. The childhood innocence radiating in their eyes is so bright that it is heartbreaking to see them getting involved in hideous violence. Have you ever imagined them being responsible for some of the world's most gruesome crimes? TV series and movies portraying notorious juvenile misbehaviors are just too graphic that we thought they could only happen in films. Hang on tight, because today we are listing the top 10 most evil kids in the world and the horrifying details of the crimes they have committed. Before we continue to our list, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content, and hit the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when we upload new videos. Let's begin. Number 10. Willie Boskett Jr., New York Growing up and knowing that his father was a murderer, it made him believe that he will end up the same way. Young Boskett's early life was nothing short of misery. He grew up in an extremely abusive environment. His mother had put him in a children's center from which he escaped and ended up going in and out of multiple detention centers for committing different crimes. In 1978, Boskett shot and killed a subway employee during an attempted robbery. He was just 15 years old at the time. This became the first of multiple armed robberies he executed and he ended up killing more transit employees in the process. Because of Boskett's numerous juvenile cases, amendments on the New York state law had been placed so that juveniles as young as 13 could be tried for murder as an adult and would also face the same penalties. Number 9. Joshua Phillips, Florida In November 1998, Maddie Clifton was reported missing. A neighborhood search with over 400 volunteers kept on searching for her even after the police called off the search. Shockingly, Phillips was even one of the volunteers. With a reward of $50,000, which was eventually raised to $100,000, her parents desperately looked for her whereabouts. A week after she went missing, the dead body of Maddie was found and reported by Phillips' mother, Melissa, after discovering the body hidden inside the base of Joshua's waterbed. In his court appearance, Philip stated that he was just playing with the young Maddie when he accidentally hit her, which caused her to bleed and cry. Afraid of his father's possible outrage, he decided to drag Maddie inside their house and into his room, where he strangled her. Number 8. Edmund Kemper, California Also called the co-ed killer, the young Kemper had a disturbing childhood. His parents divorced and he moved to Montana to stay with his abusive mother. At the age of 15, he went back to California where he brutally murdered his paternal grandparents. He even called his mom on the phone to gloat about his gruesome crime. In an interview, Kemper stated that he began living on the dark side when he was still young and he would show cruelty towards animals. He was shown no love by his mother. Being that she feared the young Kemper might hurt his sisters, he was often made to sleep in a locked basement. After convincing psychiatrists that he was rehabilitated, he was released from prison when he was 21 years old, which unsurprisingly proved to be a bad idea. After getting out, he began his killing spree which lasted for 11 months. He did this by luring females into his vehicle and then murdering them. Among his victims were his mother and her friend. Number 7. Graham Young, London Fascination with chemistry and poison was very evident with Graham Young, who was known as the teacup poisoner, later called the St. Albans Poisoner. He concocted poison and tested them on his family by placing them in their teacups. This caused them to become greatly ill and it even killed his stepmother in the process. After being detained in a mental facility with a diagnosis of schizophrenia, personality disorder, and autism, he was released after nine years when he was deemed fully recovered, even though the hospital felt that he needed to stay for at least 15 years. After being released, Young began working in laboratories and continued concocting poison. There, he would test his toxic brew on his employers. After his fourth and final victim, he became sloppy. He told a colleague that his hobby was the study of toxic chemicals, which paved the way for an investigation and eventually his arrest. 
Police discovered thallium and antimony in his pocket and later discovered a diary Young had kept, noting the doses he had given, its effects, and whether he was going to allow that person to live or die. Young later claimed that this diary was for a novel that he was writing. Number 6. Brian and David Freeman, Pennsylvania This is a shocking story of a family murder in 1995 when brothers Brian, aged 17 years old, and David, aged 16 years old, worked with their cousin Nelson Birdwell III on killing their parents Brenda and Dennis Freeman, and their 11-year-old brother, Eric. Based on the investigation, it became clear to everyone that they had murdered their parents. The young Eric was also attacked and killed while sleeping in his bed. With a shotgun in hand, the three drove away from the crime scene in Brenda's convertible. They were later arrested in Michigan three days after the heinous crime was committed. Number 5. Brenda Spencer, California School shootings have been reported many times, but this case in particular was a violent and senseless one. Brenda Spencer's killing spree left the principal and a custodian dead, with eight children and a police officer injured. Her house was just across the street from the school, and when asked over the phone by one reporter, Spencer answered, I don't like Mondays. This livens up the day. After firing 30 shots, she hid at home for several hours. She only surrendered after being promised with a Burger King meal by negotiators. Number 4. John Venables and Robert Thompson, England John Venables and Robert Thompson were cutting class when they found an easy target in James Patrick Bulger, a two-year-old child. The two schoolboys took Bulger out from the shopping center where he was initially with his mother. In 1993, Venables and Thompson were identified by a witness when they were captured on CCTV footage leading Bulger away from the shopping center. Based on the investigation, it was clear that John and Robert were the ones responsible for the murder. His dead body was laid across the train tracks in a hope to make his death look like an accident. Number 3. Jesse Pomeroy, Massachusetts As the youngest person convicted with first-degree murder in the history of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Jesse Pomeroy was responsible for the death of Katie Curran, who was 10 years old. The violence of Pomeroy started as early as age 12 when he brutally attacked several young boys and beat them with his fist and belt. After being released from the state reform school, Pomeroy moved with his mother to South Boston, where she owned a dressmaking shop. The dead body of Kate was found in the basement of Pomeroy's mother's dress shop, covered in ash. Number 2. Mary Bell, United Kingdom Mary's mother was a prostitute who gave birth to her when she was just 17. Her mother attempted to murder her numerous times throughout her childhood. A day before she turned 11, Belle strangled four-year-old Martin Brown to death. Two months after her first kill, Mary and her friend Norma Joyce Bell participated in strangulating Brian Howe to death. He was just three years old. Number 1. Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold Colorado. Weeks before Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold's scheduled high school graduation, the two orchestrated a shooting spree in their high school. This incident is now infamously known as the Columbine High School Massacre, where they killed 13 people and injured 24. Entering the school with two gym bags, both Harris and Klebold had missed their morning classes in preparation for the day of shooting. In fact, based on their journals, they had been planning for their big day for almost a year. The attack was initially planned to be done on April 1st, 1999, but ended up being on April 20th due to troubles they had in acquiring ammunition. From the 56 hostages they held inside the school library, 34 were unharmed, 10 were killed, including the two shooters who committed suicide. Harris shot himself first, followed by Klebold. Police later found that aside from the shooting, the teens managed to create a few homemade bombs inside the school cafeteria, which fortunately did not detonate. A memorial was erected behind the school on September 21, 2007 for those affected by the incident. There you have the 10 most dangerous and most evil kids in the world. Who could ever imagine seeing children be responsible for these gruesome crimes? 
What do you think about the aftermaths of their crimes? Let us know in the comment section. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit the bell icon to get notified about upcoming videos. See you in the next videos.